Hello everyone and welcome to a new episode of Practical Applications. Today I'm coming to you live from my bathroom to talk about this. Well, not shaving cream, but specifically the aerosol can. Uh, because this thing is actually pretty interesting and partially because this is actually not that old of an invention. Or it is, depending on how you look at it. The aerosol can has really been uh, in this form for about 75 years or so. It really came into its own in uh, the 30s when a Norwegian scientist really put all the components together for this. It didn't really hit the big time though until it, World War II when the army managed to put insecticide into aerosol cans. So how does an aerosol can work you might ask? Well let's go over to camera 2 and find out. So all aerosol cans, no matter whether they're my shaving cream in the bathroom or this lovely can of cleaner, they all basically operate under the principles of compressed or pressurized gas. Now when you put product into one of these things. You also put a propellant of some kind. Uh, usually it's some kind of uh, hydrocarbon or something like that. Uh, in the old days they used to use fluorocarbons which uh, actually weren't that great for the atmosphere but more on that in a minute. Uh, basically what happens whether you have compressed or pressurized gas you press the button on top and that will basically change the pressure inside the can and since it, you're operating under high pressure and compressed gas the gases want to go from one place to another and that more or less draws the product up the can and into whatever you're spraying, in this case my little rag, so that I can clean my uh, table right here which you probably can't see because I don't have the camera angle at a good enough angle. There we go, okay. Thank you camera 2. Now let's go over to camera 3 before we end off today's episode for a little bit of safety information regarding these things. Thank you camera 1. Well, first off I should note that unlike in the past uh, aerosols of today do not use fluorocarbons. Uh, you may have heard of something called the ozone uh, layer and the, how there was a hole in it. Well, that was caused by the propellant that was used up until the 70s. Uh, fluorocarbons. Well, these days it's no longer used, so you don't have to worry about that. But you should also be careful with aerosols because it is compressed gas, and as such, it can be hazardous, especially if it's uh, improperly handled, essentially. More basically, if you heat it up, it can more or less cause, you know, like an explosion or uh, or some other thing of that nature. And I should note that we here at Practical Applications do not condone explosions of any way, shape, or form, uh, whether they're uh, by the Mythbusters. Well, okay, that's different. Uh, we basically don't do explosions. Also, it should be noted that aerosol cans need to be disposed of properly if they still have product in them. This is because of all the gases that are in there, you understand. So, to good dispose of them, what you have to do is more or less take them to what's called a, ho a household hazardous waste event. You can find these online and I'll provide a link below as to more information as to why uh, aerosol cans can be hazardous. Now if it's empty, you know, you're pretty much free to go. You can chuck it in the trash. But I'll still provide that information in the description below. That's all for this episode of Practical Applications and I'll see you next time. <laughs>